everyone. I'm Adrian. Philip, Jay, we're from Audio Excellence in Canada. Um, today we're going to talk about uh, a topic that, uh, uh, as a store, we, we've been uh, quite intrigued by. So uh, it's a comparison between um, PS Audio Stellar Components versus Hegel Integrated Amplifiers. Um, as some of you may know, if you've watched earlier videos, we have been very impressed with um, Hegel integrated amplifiers and we really like it in the store. And so we thought, well, let's do a series of comparisons and see how they stack up. Um, so this is where it gets interesting. Um, uh, um, if you haven't already seen it, you will. Uh, there is a video that we did earlier <coughs> where we did the initial uh, uh, comparison and gave you our um, uh, uh, our initial thoughts about what the two um, sounded like uh, head to head. Uh, so you may want to watch that first or watch that after this. I guess it really doesn't matter. But today we're going to go into a little bit more detail in terms of our findings. Um, so we set up um, the PS Audio uh, uh, Gain Cell uh, DAC preamp the Stella with the S300 power amplifier and then compared it to the Hegel Rost, I think it was? That's correct. Yeah. So initially we wanted to actually compare it with the H190 integrated because the prices would be more similar. But it turned out that we had just sold the H190 demo, the distributor. Didn't I didn't have, know. <laughs> I didn't know. The distributor <laughs> did not have stock right away to replace it, so we couldn't do a comparison. So we uh, decided to go uh, uh, with the Rost, which is being discontinued. Um, and we were driving it uh, with the uh, MagnaPen 1.7i yeah. uh, planar speakers. Part of the reason we chose that is because uh, the MagnaPens are not an easy load relative to a typical cone speaker. So we figured let's let's uh, um, test the amplifiers um, uh, with something that's difficult. Um, the room is not a big room, but it's it's deceiving. Uh, the ceiling is about 20 feet tall, and then the width and, and depth is roughly about 10 by 12 approximately. Um, in the earlier video, you'll see a little bit of that room. So anyway, um, Jay, why don't you start? Uh, actually, before do, we do that, why don't I give you some backgrounds in terms of specifications? The Both the PS Audio and the Hegel uh, um, have internal DACs built in. Um, power is somewhat similar. Well, in this case, the H, uh, the Hegel Rost is actually a lower powered integrated. It's rated for 75 right. watts. Right, as, uh -huh. opposed to, as opposed to the um, PS Audio S300, which is 300 and uh, into four ohms. Yeah. So, so on paper, the, the PS Audio certainly has more power. Now, we weren't playing it all that loud, so it, you know, ultimately the, the, the full output power won't matter all that much. Um, the uh, PS Audio is a combo, so you've got a, a preamp DAC with a separate power amplifier, so you will need a pair of interconnects, whereas the, the Hegel Rost is all in one, so you do save some money with regards to that. Um, the uh, PS Audio, for some of you who may not know, PS Audio is an American company. They've been around for a long time. Paul McGowan is the owner, CEO, great job, has an incredible uh, background in terms of all the things that he, he's pioneered, innovated, designed. Um, he's led PS Audio from when he came back to the company in the, I want to say, mid-90s uh, to the powerhouse that PS Audio is today. Uh, social media is incredible. You can go on YouTube and, and look up his channel. He's got lots and lots of videos covering up uh, all kinds of uh, great topics. Um, and he's got a blog that he writes every day. This guy is unbelievable how, how uh, he can write so much. It's, it's incredible. Um, Hegel um, officially, according to the website, um, started... Where are my notes here? I can't seem to find it, but basically, I think in the 90s. Uh, so they've been around also for quite a while. Norwegian company um, started to get um, a lot of notice, um, uh, I guess about eight years ago, nine years ago. I heard about it um, not all that long ago, surprisingly enough, um, through uh, a magazine called Soundstage um, when they reviewed uh, one of their products, and I was uh, quite impressed by the write-up. Um, so um, in Canada, the PS Stellar uh, 
preamp uh, DAC combined with the amplifier um, sells for 4698 Canadian. Um, the Hegel um, Rost is well, $3,500. Five. $3, $3, and uh, it's being replaced by something called the H120, which would be 3600 So they'll, they're very similar. Okay. Um, one other advantage with the PS Audio is that because it's separate, you can buy it one piece at a time. So you don't have to, you know, if you if the budget is tight, you can start with the gain cell DAC preamp um, first or the amplifier, whichever you prefer. Uh, whereas with the with the Hegel, of course, it, it is what it is. So anyway, uh, Jay, why don't you start? Uh, give me your thoughts uh, in detail about what you thought. Um. Well, first of all, I want to say I love you, Paul, but I really liked the Hegel um, because it was just more uh, human. Human. Um, it was more organic. Um, and so wait, you liked Hegel more? Yeah, uh, of course, I liked the Hegel more. And, and first of all, I, I really do want to say that I was very impressed with the PS Audio. Uh, one thing is that I did not expect uh, a Class D amplifier to drive the magnet pens the way it did. Um, especially because I've had experience in the past with Class D amplifiers and my personal magnet pens that didn't do so well. So this really uh, opened an eye for me in terms of you know a quality Class D amplifier versus the ones that I've been playing around with. Um, and going back to the Hegel, uh, the Hegel was the sound stage and the depth was um, to m more to my liking. I was able to enjoy it more uh, while the PS Audio in my uh, as a perspective, was a little bit more forward and a little bit more articulate. Um, the bass response on both were phenomenal. Both were driving the magnet pants um, in its glory. And I must say, I was very much impressed with both performances um, in terms of sound stage, depth, uh, depth um, separation. And you know, you can put all the fancy audio file words out there, but both drove the magnet pants and sounded really, really great. Um, let's just take it a little bit further. So. When you and I were first listening, yeah. so I went into the room and the system was already set up. So you did very kindly the switching, whereas I just sat there and, and so this way I wasn't distracted. Um, uh, I told you what my what, what my thoughts were, mm -hmm. and and uh, you thought that the um, the Hegel was quite significantly better yeah and I, I suggested that in in my case I, I I could see why one person would like the other mm -hmm. uh, of the product versus the other mm -hmm. um, and and in fact I was still at that point having a hard time deciding between the two mm -hmm. um, so you're clearly uh, uh, yeah so so I remember you coming in and telling me that um, I didn't have a volume matched I was playing by ear and so we actually volume matched uh, um, both pieces and after you left I sat there listening for a good 30 minutes to an hour um, and I still uh, was you know preferring the Hegel overall um, to my preference but I could definitely see why someone would say the PS audio sounds better um, so yeah I mean both had had their strength I, I felt I found the PS audio to be more intimate a little bit more um, a full in the bottom end um, a little bit more meat uh, and bite to it compared to the Hegel, but the Hegel had a darker background. Some may say that it sounds more analog than digital, all these, you know, things. Um, but, but at the end of the day, both of them sounded phenomenal. And I was quite surprised by that. Uh, Villa, what about you? Uh, oh, first, let's preface this. Um, Philip has sold more Hegel and PS Audio than the both of us combined, <laughs> Jay and I. So we're really slackers here. So so it'll be interesting to see. And I, again, just uh, just to remind everybody, this is unscripted. Uh, uh, we've purposely set it up so that I have no idea what these guys are about to say. We don't take sides. I have no idea what's going on. So what they say is what they say. And it's also done in the morning. So we have, <laughs> yeah, we have yes, parts. it's about 4 a.m. in the morning right now. Somewhere in the world, yeah. <laughs> yeah somewhere in the world. Uh, first of all, I wouldn't call you guys slackers. I would call myself an overachiever. So let's <laughs> okay. just get that straight. All right. um, <laughs> Wow, so those are two really great combinations. Um, uh, again, <laughs> let me preface by saying I hated the PS Audio to begin with, uh, even though I championed it in the store. Um, the reason is that 
the gain cell DAC and the S300 took a long time to break in. And then one day it was like, oh, it just started melting away. So, uh, you know, I know the sound very intimately. Um, now, it has certain limitations because of the budget, because of what they can put into it. And between the two, um, one can still distinctly hear that the S300, for instance, is a Class D amp. So the kind of things it does really well, which is have lots of current available in the bottom end, which Class D amps do really well, and that certainly bears itself out because there's, the bass is tremendous on that unit once the unit is broken in. And the other thing is that Class D has this ability to pinpoint things within the structure of the music being played. So you hear all the little bits because it has a fair amount of control over those little tiny elements. The major differences between, say, the PS Audio Class D setup and the Hegel is the Hegel, because of its dampening factor, is really, really, really grippy and has a very dark background, which allows music to spring forth from that. So it might not be quite as articulate in the really super small little tiny things, but overall it seems to have a more harmonious focused structure, which is, you know, for audiophiles like us, or audio lovers like us, is a desirable thing. And it's probably why Jay prefers it over the PS Audio by a little bit. Not by a lot, but by a little bit, oh, if yeah, you I have to the, choose. It's very, very close, very, very close. Very close, right? Like if you told me, you know, one was a better deal than the other, then, you know, <laughs> if I was the buyer, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate. Like, uh, we champion both both things. They, they have a slightly different take on how it goes about it. And certainly with uh, the PS Audio, you can opt for the monoblocks, which are even better than the, the stereo uh, version because they actually use different modules inside. It is a better module in the monoblocks. So that would, you know, that's another comparison for another day, but at the same time, it's an easy enough thing to do with the PS Audio. So, so to sum up, which did you prefer? Well, I like the Hegel more. Um, mostly because it sounds more like the kind of things that I grew up with, which was all Class AB or Class A. Uh, I do use a Class D amp at home all the time. Um, and that's mostly because it runs very cool and I got it, you know, <laughs> really expensively. Uh, but it does a good job, the one that I have. Uses a slightly different module from the PS Audio, um, but they're very, very similar. And if I had my druthers right now, being that it's time to make, probably make a change, I would go with Hegel because that's my new current favorite. Okay. So, um, Jay stole a lot of my, uh, <laughs> my, my, my description notes. Um, as as uh, Jay mentioned, um, when, I, when I started to listen, we, we decided to make sure that it would be fair. So we level matched uh, to one kilohertz um, seating position and um, uh, and then I went back and forth, and Jay was very kind to do the switching for me. Um, so with the Hegel, definitely very dark background. I was actually quite surprised uh, at how obvious that was. If you if if you don't understand what we mean by being a dark, uh, having a dark background, it's like imagine between the speakers uh, a space that is really quiet and then you have instruments or notes or music just coming out of this background and it's uh, 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 not every product actually does that well. The Hegel does that very, very well. The other thing I noticed is that uh, within that sound space, um, the individual um, instruments were tight and focused. Um, and, and then in between the instruments was just space. Um, uh, um, the sound stage seemed to be a little bit laid back. The um, PS Audio, in comparison, I found was actually richer, um, uh, uh, almost warmer sounding, almost, I wouldn't say tube-like, but certainly warmer sounding. And in that respect, I actually like the PS Audio. And, and let me just say this, uh, I went into this comparison having a bias, and, and the bias is uh, uh, was formed with our experience in the last three or four weeks with Hegel. We were so uh, impressed with Hegel that somehow I had this impression that it's just going to kill everything and, 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 and the PS Audio wouldn't stand a chance. When we actually did a comparison, I was amazed that the PS Audio in many ways, for me, 
was better. I like the fact that it was richer sounding. I like the fact that um, the between the sounds, uh, the speakers within the sound stage, um, it was more full. It, it's it's as if if you were in a, at an event, as I said to Jay yesterday, uh, you don't hear independent um, instruments as such. You hear one big sound, and it's continuous and it's full. And I actually like that more. That's not to say you couldn't pinpoint or pick out the instruments you can. It's just that it flowed better. Um, it was also more uh, intimate, as Jay was suggesting. So when I played um, uh, an instrument uh, uh, um, or voice, it sounded like it was in the room. Uh, with the Hegel, it was a little bit more distant, a little bit more laid back. Um, now that's an interesting thing, so that if you have a small room and you're using, say, a cone speaker, um, you may want to have a slightly more laid back sound uh, so that it gives you the impression that your room is bigger, your, your, the voice is a little bit further away. Um, so that's something that you can consider and, and, and decide which works better for you. Um, for me, there was no clear winner. Having said that, the very fact that I thought the Hegel would trump all over it and it didn't speaks volumes for a PS Audio. It's not a cop-out. I, I could easily uh, see either uh, a combination um, and easily recommend uh, um, either very, very, uh, very well. So. Uh, so that's our uh, conclusion for, for this shootout. We'll be doing more of these if you like them. And certainly, as always, um, if you like this video, please subscribe, um, turn on the notification. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them at the bottom of this uh, video. And uh, we'll see you again next time.